Conventional wisdom says there's nothing you can do about weak, worn, or injured cartilage. But research has shown this is not the case. And in this video, I'll explain what you need to do to improve, heal, and strengthen your knee cartilage. Here are your knees from the front, and you'll notice there's muscles on your thighs, around your shins. You have your kneecaps here. Here are the bones without the muscles, and an up close of your right knee. This is your thigh bone or the femur, the shin bone or the tibia, the kneecap or the patella, when you take the kneecap off, you can see the groove on the end of the thigh bone. This groove, as well as the end of the thigh bone and the top of the shin bone, all have cartilage on it. Cartilage is a substance that acts to protect the bone and when it's healthy, provide a smooth, slick surface for motion to easily occur. Now, all of these parts of your leg need to be strong for your need to be happy and healthy. So you need strong muscles, tendons, which tie the muscles to the bone, and cartilage, which protect the ends of your bone. And the good news is muscles, tendons, and cartilage can all get stronger, but they need different types of exercise to do so. And the reason they need different types of exercise to get stronger is they have different amounts of blood supply. Blood helps tissues heal and get stronger. Blood brings the ingredients required in the recipe for strength. Muscles get a lot of blood supply. Tendons get a fraction of this blood supply that the muscles get, and cartilage gets a pretty negligible amount of blood supply, if any. Now, when I talk to someone about strengthening, they think, oh yeah, I know what strengthening is. It's something that requires a lot of effort, and it's pretty challenging. Maybe it's eight reps or 10 reps. This is strengthening, but it's strengthening specifically for muscle. If you want to talk about strengthening for the tendon, you are talking about a lot less effort and cumulatively a much larger number of repetitions, so hundreds of repetitions. Now, if you're wanting to strengthen the cartilage located deep inside of your knees, then you need to be even gentler because it's getting little, if any, blood supply. Strong cartilage holds onto water very tightly, so it's smooth and it's firm. But weak cartilage is soft. The softer cartilage means that the cells or the building blocks of cartilage will have weaker chemical bonds. They won't stick to water molecules and to one another with the resilience of hard, healthy cartilage. So the type of exercise required to make cartilage stronger, sturdier, and more resilient is going to require thousands of repetitions cumulatively. These exercises are going to look more like motion. This type of movement is more like a gentle massage. It applies pressure to the cartilage and firms it up, making the cartilage better able to withstand activities that put force on the inside of your knee. Just as a review, when your knee joint is strong, you have firm cartilage. But when your knee joint is weak, your cartilage is soft. And when you have soft cartilage, everyday activities can cause microscopic pieces of cartilage to shear off. Cartilage doesn't have nerve supply, so when damage is happening to your cartilage, your cartilage has no way of immediately telling your brain that there's a pain or problem happening. What happens is the microscopic cells of cartilage float around in your joint and eventually contact something inside your knee, a structure, a tissue inside your knee that does have nerve supply. And that tissue sends a message to your brain that there is a problem, that there's pain occurring. This means pain is delayed. So you might not actually feel the pain from your cartilage shearing off, until several hours later or even the next day. This delayed pain makes it very difficult to overcome knee pain. Improving your knee cartilage is often the missing link in overcoming knee pain. 